Hey guys, I'm Dave. Welcome back to the Power Wagon Restoration Vlog. Today I'm going to be going in depth into the sheet metal repair on the cab of the 1958 Dodge Power Wagon. So stick around, you're watching Parts and Restoration. All right, gang, check it out. This is the other, uh, this is the other quarter panel support that goes inside the Power Wagon's cab. This piece is pretty rusty as you can see. And I would say that I'm getting pretty decent at making new parts. This is a piece of flat 14 gauge sheet steel. And as you can see here, this is gonna be a nice little replacement panel. Once it's all trimmed up, I think I did a pretty okay job matching those angles. So we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Oh, there it is. Two repaired panels that are completely rust free, ready to go back on the truck after a little bit of, uh, after I finish all these tacks, everything's gotta be tacked and up and then these will be ready to go back onto the cab. Yeah. What's up there, cool kids? It's been a busy day. Uh, I've been sandblasting nonstop for the last, excuse me, a couple hours, and uh, it's not fun. But I'll show you what I've been working on. It's a lot of parallels to sandblasting in my job as a fireman. I go in there, I can barely see. I've got a light going that helps a little bit. Um, and I've got a window that's about this big on the front of a hood that I can sort of see through. Um, super exciting. Anyway, I got the bottom of the cab all blasted up. I just wrapped up doing that. And uh, earlier today, I took some time to blast uh, these two cab components that support the, uh, that support the dashboard. This is one of the quarter panels that uh, has been cleaned up. Kind of just did a uh, rough uh, rust blast off on this thing. The windows surround for the rear of the cab. Uh, both of those firewall supports I showed you, I blasted one of the uh, fenders, and then I'm really proud of this, this thing right here. So this piece kind of marks my first foray into metal forming. Uh, this is the part that sits just above the windshield inside the cab. Headliner attaches to the top right there. This piece is com was completely rotten out all the way across. And as you can see, if you look at it from kind of like a... Uh, um, a manufacturing standpoint, you've got a flat piece that's sort of rolled over, and that'll be really easy if you just made it in one flat, but this thing is ah, somewhat V-shaped. It's got two ang it's got an angle to it. So, in order to uh, achieve this angle that I've created, I made, well first I rolled this, this edge in my brake on a nice long flat piece, four feet wide, and then I stretch this whole area just with a hammer. Beat it really hard. And for the uninitiated, when you stretch metal, you make an area thin. So I've got some thick metal here. It gets real thin. And initially, initially this is all the same thickness. When this gets thin here, it kind of causes these two ends to go and bend out. There's, it's, it widens in kind of a triangle shape right across here. And it makes this thing bend on itself. I also creased this section to match the original crease. And, um, yeah, this whole bottom section here is all brand new metal. You can see where the edge is, where the spot welds went in. This was extremely rusty and totally unsavable. Actually, here you go. The entire bottom of that panel looked like this. I still have to replace that section, and I will. But I just got that section done. First time doing shrinking, stretching, using my, my sheet metal brake, and a ton of hand forming. It turned out really cool. Lots of fun. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing the floor of the cab on the passenger side. Check it out. Step one, put your pattern on a piece of steel. Step two, cut out your piece. Step three, spray paint around all the edges of your new panel so you know exactly where to cut out the old rusty metal. Step four, cut out the old crappy metal. Step five, tack in the new metal and realize that you should have just did the whole panel like you did on this side instead of trying to save this stupid shape in here. Learn lessons in step five. Step six, weld the crap out of your panel and then run out of wire. I also got this one pretty much all welded in, making great progress in the bottom of this cab. And you can see this thing is like completely rust free. Uh, I'm gonna come in here with some wire wheels and just get some of this crap out of these nooks and crannies. But this thing is ready to get repainted as soon as I finish with these weld repairs and it will be totally rust free. So cool. Hey folks, majorly busy afternoon in the shop. Look at this thing. It is just like shiny as can be. Got all the paint stripped off of this thing. 
been going in with uh, wire brushes. I've been using my little my little uh, grinder here with sanding pads on it, just taking all this paint down, which is great. Um, so I can start going in and doing some like real body work. I've actually been going in and smoothing out this roof here, which is super super wavy. Um, now I've got a little thing going on here that I've been messing with the last hour or so. This section, <laughs> gotcha, is off of the old yellow cab, front cowl there. Uh, this section was just totally rotten out. So I've made myself a repair panel that is much larger than I need, and I'm going to weld it in, um, probably cut some of the excess off, and uh, get that lined up. Next time you see a story, it'll be it. Well, there she is, all welded in. Got to do a little bit more uh, surface work on this, but it's welded in and it's solid. I'm happy with it. Also did a little weld repair over here. Haven't ground these welds down yet, uh, or at least finally ground them down. Doesn't look great on the back side. Uh, this actually didn't turn out as good as I'd hoped. I got a little bit of warping in there. I got a little bit too aggressive with it. Kind of put a bit of a wave in this panel, so I'm gonna have to iron that out, no problem. Anyway, um, I spent a ton of time today getting in here and getting a lot of this rust out with grinders and um, just all kinds of different flap discs and whatnots. Uh, actually a lot of hand uh, wire brushing just because these some of these spaces are so tight and close. Anyway, I've got some core seal, which is a water-based rust converter. I'm gonna be painting onto any of these surfaces that I don't expect to do any welding on in the future. So that's the majority of them. So let's go seal this thing up and I'll show you the aftermath. Okay, I got some good effect on target here. This stuff works really, really well. I, I've said it a million times on this channel. I encapsulated the entire frame of my 19, 9, 1998 Chevy 1500 with this, painted it with rust with a uh, with a rubberized undercoating, and I never had rust for the five years that I owned that truck. Uh, and I tried real hard. I abused the heck out of it. This stuff is fantastic. Um, this is slapped on with a with a brush, just not caring at all because you're not going to see any of this stuff. I'm going to paint over with, with spray paint and it'll be relatively flat, but all this stuff is hidden. And this is the area that I don't want to have to think about. I want to know that this, this area is totally sealed up until forever because I don't feel like having to crawl up underneath here when I get some moisture in this cab and it's a mess. So anyway, this is done. This is good to go. I'm going to paint over this with something, some kind of spray on, and then this area will be good to go. Man, oh man, if I could just leave the entire truck just like this and it would never rust, I think I'd do it because it looks just so cool. All the shininess, all the shadows, all the reflections. Anyway, uh, on the back side here, I've used some of that core seal on the back side of the mouse house, of the, the headliner piece that comes in here where mice tend to live and pee and rot everything in sight. So this has all been encapsulated. Um, this piece up here, I'm gonna leave alone for the time being only because I may need to do some work to fix this body line section here. It's a little rusty, a little rotty. I'm not sure how much welding I'm gonna to have to do to get it squared away, but I don't wanna have this all uh, painted over in an area that I'm gonna to have to work in. So taking a break on that. Now I'm gonna rust encapsulate the bottom of this. There you have it, core seal. All sealing in the flavor here. Um, all this rusty stuff that I had wire wheeled clean uh, and exposed, I don't want it to come back. So this is a rust converter and it actually is also a rust encapsulator. It's all water-based. I really like this product, I've used it a ton. Um, and as you can see, there's a couple places that I haven't touched, areas where I'm going to be welding more and finishing the welds on. Uh, and then this area particularly, this right here is a body mount hole and this is 14 gauge steel, it's super duper thick. I don't want to cut this out and replace it with new steel because I don't want to screw with the geometry here. It makes me a little nervous. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld these pinholes up from both sides. Any kind of pitting that I see, I'm going to dig out and then weld up. And that should give me a really solid repair that I can feel happy and comfortable with. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the shop. Tonight's work has been to discover that this... Uh, there's like a drain gutter that goes around this opening here. This opening is a vent that opens up and allows fresh air to come into the cab. But there's a little drainage section that goes around it, and it is total trash. I'm going through with a Dremel tool and cutting out all the rot here, and I've created a uh, an outline of the original bottom metal that uh, I'm going to cut out and replace this entire section. I was just going to patch the holes, 
and then I realized that that would cause some drainage issues. So I'll have a nice smooth uh, plane all the way across the bottom and it'll go right to the drain hole in the bottom here. So stay tuned. Okay, everything's all cut out on the main drainage surfaces in through here. And I've got my one side, two side pieces cut out and then right in the middle goes the little drainage nipple here. Okay, this is all tacked up, welded in for fitment purposes. Looks good. I put the, uh, I put the cowl vent in just to make sure everything kind of fit up the way it was supposed to. Nothing was out of alignment. And it's not, so that's good news. Uh, of course, I run out of welding gas just in time to actually weld this thing up and do all the rest of the welding I plan on doing today. So, off to the gas supplier. Boy, talk about a pain in the butt to weld. These welds all look awful, but they are relatively secure, solid in there. And I'm working my way around, just getting all the holes filled up. Kind of hard to see with my light. There we go. But, um, once this is done, I'm probably just going to grind these edges down, kind of clean it up just a touch, refill and make sure everything's sealed up. I got to make a little patch for this little tiny section right there, right there, and then I'll be good to go. Here is the cow vent uh, rain trough that we were working on yesterday, and I never really showed you the bottom, but it is solid as a rock. Nice all new metal all the way around. She's done. I got to drill a single hole right here to allow that drainage nipple to attach so I can attach a hose for the, to let the water run out and away from the engine. But as we speak, I'm just going completely crazy on the underside of this cab, just welding up all the places where I just untaxed. Here's a pile of parts that have been, uh, you know, had been tacked up prior and they're all just about halfway done, getting fully welded through. <sighs> Big job. All right, here we've got a firewall with both of its lower, I guess we're gonna call those kick panels or supports. If you recall, these were completely trashed. I've done a ton of surgery on there. There's a ton of brand new metal in these. And this entire piece you're looking at, totally done. Ready to get installed back on the car. This is kind of fun. Did a little mock-up of the cab here. Got everything kind of in place. Uh, I did pretty much finish welding up the bottom floor pans on both sides. Um, kind of mocked the rear, um, the rear part of the window, so and back in. And all these welds are done, making great progress today. They've basically been welding non-stop since I talked to you last, but this is going to look great. Absolutely thrilled to get this thing moving. Tapping time. They call this machine porn. Oh. Oh yeah, that's what we call screwing. This is good stuff. Anyway, I drilled out the old rusty threads. I'm putting in uh, threads two sizes larger. These are gonna be 7 16 20 thread. And again, these are the hinge, these are the mounting points for the hinge plates for the doors. So I'll be able to bolt those up in maybe 35, 40 minutes. All right, y'all check this out. So on these, uh, on the seam edge, this is like the front of the A pillar or the back of the A pillar that faces the door. I've got a lot of rough metal spots, actually less so on this side than on the other side, but here's a good example. It's pitted out along the edge, it's all wobbly. And my thought was maybe I'd just cut back like an inch off of that or like a quarter inch off of that and clean it up. And I said, you know what, that's stupid. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going in, I'm just gonna weld up that whole edge. The only reason that's not a solid piece, you know, it's manufacturing, uh, you know, a simplicity of manufacturing piece comes over they tack they spot weld it it would take them a lot of time at the factory to do a weld like that that would clean this edge up i'm just gonna do it here and it'll solve my problem of all these like rough crusty edges and um i'm glad i thought of this so here we go moving along here's something i'm doing now i've got a lot of little pinholes in this panel here but it's got relatively good looking metal except for on the edges and in order to uh, explore these and kind of determine how much rust is behind here, instead of just removing the entire panel and replacing it like I probably should, but don't want to, I'm just, I'll just take my MIG gun and I'll give it a little zap and I'll see what it exposes. And I'll just start trying to work my MIG gun around that circle. And as I go, a lot of times I'll follow a rust hole all the way up a line like I did on these two here. And then once I find solid metal, it all engages, and then I'll just go around and I'll, I'll plug that hole like I did here. And you know, you gotta remember metal work is a additive and subtractive process. 
In this case, I'm removing bad metal, replacing it with good metal, and then I'll just grind it flat, and it should look like it was never even there. Well, welding up every inch of the A-pillars today was not exactly the direction I thought this day was going to take. Uh, but you know what? I had a realization that if I didn't get this done now, it was going to be significantly harder to do when this was welded, well, the cab was welded up. This one is basically done. I've gotten all these edges welded together uh, to the point where I think I can go in there with glazing putty at the end if I want to, try and make it a little bit, a little bit cleaner. But everything has been welded up and ground down flat and flush. I think it's looking pretty good, to be honest. I mean, good for me. Maybe not good for like Jesse James or something like that, but this is kind of what this all looked like about an hour ago, or that other side looked like about an hour ago. Just seams welded up, holes discovered, and, you know, gone around, and um, just been, you know, making my way through the metal, going where it tells me to go. Okay, I'm back with my gas, and this is just the before. I've done an initial welding, then I've done grinding to flatten things out. You can see all my low spots. You can see all the spots that I've missed along the edges where the weld is uneven. And I'm going to build this edge by filling in any low spot like that one. These guys, all these lows are going to get some weld in them. And then when I grind it, I should have a nice edge on there again. Wait and see. All right. Big day at the shop. I am beat. Check out these A pillars. I don't know how well you can see. I primed them. They are solid. Solid as can be. I welded up along all this outside edge here, and that was a seam. All across this edge here, that was a seam. Now I've uh, got it primed, ground down. Still have to get in here. This is gonna be done with final fit up. Same deal on this side. Everything was a seam all the way up. Now been welded. I did a bead all the way across here. It actually looked rough from the factory. Originally from the factory, there was just one weld here, one weld here. I like that fully welded up look. Um, and I've just gone all the way across here. I found so many just little tiny pinholes that I uh, sealed up by welding. Did a lot of work kind of cleaning up, squaring off these uh, little pockets here where the hinge plate goes in. Same as here. I had, all, I had tapped all these holes in a larger size. You saw that this morning. Still got a little bit. I've got some little spots here that need to be kind of dressed with, uh, with like some, uh, some glazing putty, which I will do. Um, but if I kept welding in here, I was just gonna, and grinding away, I was getting thin spots that I was worried about, like just grinding away too much metal. It's very difficult to control that with a flap disc wheel. Anyway, um, here's that headliner piece. I've got the flange tacked back in place that will get spot welded in or plug welded in to this surface here. So that's made some progress on that. I'm gonna finish that tomorrow. My goal is to have that finished up and put back in the truck tomorrow and kind of have all this stuff cleaned up, get in here and patch up all this rally. Okay, big welding day. You can see I've got my proper welding shoes on. I've been working on these corners of this section. You saw this before. This section sits right above the windshield, right? On the inside of the cab. These corner pieces, totally rotten out, nasty, worthless. Replacing them with ones that I built and turned myself created this section first and then created the flange and I did the exact same thing on this side again the remnant of this just totally roached piece garbage making new ones and we're gonna fit this thing up throw it back in the uh, the front section there hi Justin all right getting some more progress done on these flanges I installed this one uh, last time I was at the shop but I tuned everything up with it and I had to install these side flanges here and there. Get, it's a little bit sketchy. You can see fully welded up these two sides over here. I can't remember if I showed that earlier, but let's compare. Here's the original section. Just all nasty, unusable in its present condition. I made this entire bottom section, which is a replacement for that. And here are the original flanges, all in the right spots. See that matches up just right. So the next step is going to be to finish welding up all these tacks and get this installed back on the uh, front of the truck. Here we are at the windshield, and I had a bit of flange here that was just completely toast. 
As you can see, it's rot, rusty, rotty on the one end. I tried welding it up, that didn't work. But it's just pitted and, and just rotten. So instead of trying to salvage that, just did a quick angle, bent a quick angle on my brake and uh, drilled out the one hole here, actually cut the edge of that flange and then bent it just on this point right here. Created myself an exact duplicate and I can just drop this in, quick weld up and this will be perfect. Here we are back at the windshield. Here's the above portion there. And let's talk wipers, windshield wipers. There's two varieties, I actually have both. The Bosch variety, and this is the electric powered windshield wiper motor. And then you have the original factory vacuum powered wipers. And this is kind of interesting. You can hear it. Uh, can you do hear it when I do it one handed? You hear that vacuum that's sucking? So this is vacuum powered. It runs off vacuum generated by the engine and it's hosed right into the engine through some connectors. Anyway, uh, on either one of these options, the wipers are situated right, the wiper motors are situated behind this panel. Uh, and I had these panels, I had to purchase these because my truck did not come with them. You may recall earlier today, there was a straight line across the bottom of here because this was a solid piece that I created from new steel. And in order to create this proper cutout, I used a template. Just to make sure that I got the exact dimensions correct. And this one also, wiper motors on both sides, obviously. So we got ourselves a perfect fit. This was from the trashed original metal. So uh, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. I think it makes more sense to use the electric ones if they work. Uh, and this is interesting too. You can see this lever, this little knob here, actually protrudes through that hole so that when you want to turn the wiper on, you pull on that. Can't really do it right now. It's actually, this is probably seized in place. Uh, so that would have to be worked on. Anyway, vacuum wipers don't work all that well when you're actually accelerating your vacuum drops and uh, they don't work as well. They work great when you're sitting still at a traffic light. So interesting concept. Uh, it was it was a smart idea at the time, but with the advent of electric motors this small, it makes sense to use this. This is actually like a Lux uh, addition to this vehicle. These are very expensive individually, so I may try and get these running. All right, I'm pretty beat. I'm winding down for the night and I gotta take a break from this because I wanna throw it away because I'm just tired of looking at it and that's how I get sometimes. So uh, here we are at the back of the cab. There is a ton of rot, rust through spots that I've discovered back here that need mitigating. And in this case, the mitigation is replacement. Uh, as you can see, I've done a tape. Oh, I've removed the old paint using my amazing Eastwood SCT tool, which I recommend to anybody who restores stuff. This is not a paid endorsement. I paid for this with my own money. They are fantastic. Um, I'm going to, and then I've, I've, so I've removed the paint with that. Uh, and then I've gone and made a tape outline, um, masked off the space, sprayed in the edge that I want to cut along, and I'm going to cut this whole section out. Now, this is the first mitigation step here. I'm going to have to go in on the side and do a small panel there and another one over here, and then that'll be a wrap. Okay, here we are, made the cut. This bottom support member is, well, a little crusty, as you see. Found some, um, I guess this is some kind of like, yeah, it's definitely some kind of uh, tar or rubberized. Anyway, I'm gonna fill these up. But anyway, yeah, take a look. Got a little bit of a rust through hole here but we've removed this whole section of crusty metal. And as you can see, this thing was a total time bomb. Any day, uh, if, even if I had filled up a couple of these holes or did Bondo in them, this stuff is just ugh, really bad. So glad to have this off of the truck. So when I paint it, it will be crap. Okay, the next step in this process is going to be to get it. Oh my God, really? Before I was so rudely interrupted, I was going to say that I'm going to, the next step is going to be to get in here with a wire wheel to get all this scale off, or maybe even use the needle scaler. Weld up some of these pinholes that have formed in this edge here, which is the bottom flange edge of the, of the floor pan. And then I'm gonna take this repair panel that I've created on my four foot brake, which is a godsend. Um, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work to this. Now, this edge has a little bit of a, a little bit of crown to it, as they say. 
and I need to create a little bit of crown on this panel because right now it is perfectly square and flat. So to do that, I'm going to do a couple of cuts right along here, a couple of curved cuts, just the thickness of the, the, of the wheel, of the cutoff disc wheel. And that will allow this material here to come closer together in a few spots, which will give a little bit of crown to this panel. So once that's done, weld that in. And then I've got a little work below here that we'll talk Next time I'm at the shop, after I take care of this business here, I need to get into this bottom. This is this part of the floor pan right here um, is uh, a, a, a C channel that is responsible for the mounting. So a mounting bolt goes through there, mounting bolt goes through there. There was a ton of rust through that I filled with weld on this. This is 14 gauge uh, sheet steel. It's extremely heavy duty and tough and thick. And so instead of replacing all these pieces, I just filled these spots with weld and I used my the electrode on the MIG gun as uh, essentially a probe because what happens is when you put electricity through thin rusty metal, it basically just evaporates the rusty metal and it's just gone, it disappears. So it leaves a bigger hole and you keep on uh, filling with weld until you hit solid metal and it catches and then you start, you're able to fill it in. So I need to grind these flat and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that platinum rust encapsulator that you saw on the frame on the whole bottom of this thing, followed by a coat of a uh, rubberized undercoat. So, Hey gang, getting back into it today and I'm, I'll get you caught up here. So we saw last time this uh, section of the rear of the cab, which is a total rusty rat nest here was removed. And now I've replaced it with a new strip. You saw last week that I had bent an angle in a piece and I was gonna try and make some sliced pie cuts to make the uh, piece kind of curve around to follow this, this crown here. That didn't work out. So I wound up cutting that flange off and I just made the flange out of a second piece. So I've got a nice wide piece, tack welded in place, follows the line, the contour of the other metal perfectly. And then I just cut a flange that I have matched up off of this uh, mating surface that it gets spot welded onto. And uh, it's not perfect, but I mean, again, this is on the underside of the cab. Really, this just needs to attach. You won't even see it. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and finish welding this all up and it'll be good to go. Okay, so we've got that bottom piece pretty well tacked in place. Gonna let that cool off for a little while. Next up is this belt line. Runs right along the mid, mid cab. As you can see, and I've shown this before, this is in bad shape. So fortunately, panning over, I've got an extra cab rear right there. And I've taken the time to remove the piece that I need off of that. And my goodness, she is in great shape. A uh, little whammo right there, which I'm gonna dolly out, no problem. Okay, quick and easy trick, just to see what I've got here. I, here's what I have available in terms of panel that I've cut. And here it is lined up in its place on the body. So now I can just kind of start trimming down. Um, I'll put some indicator marks, probably do like a notch mark here, notch mark here, just so I can line these up. And then I'm gonna transfer uh, what needs to be replaced by doing like a tape cover up. And then I'm gonna transfer that on. All right, here's what we got. Tape is covering up all the rusty parts uh, on this section here. And as you can see, I have indexed this edge to follow along the exact pattern of this edge here so I can get a good index. Now I know personally that the only thing that I need to cover up lies within these two straight edges all the way up. So I'll be able to put this right onto this panel. I'll probably do a spray paint tracing in a different color than anything on here. And uh, then I'll be ready to cut it out. Uh, once this is cut out, I'll start doing my cuts to do that Fitzy's fabrication uh, cut and butt method. If you haven't seen Fitzy's fabrication and you're interested in uh, sheet metal welding, go check them out on YouTube. Fitzy's, F-I-T-Z-E-E-Z, -E -E Fitzy's fabrication. Uh, that's his method. The cut and butt works so very well. Anyway, let's make this happen. Okay, so this didn't match up quite as good as I had hoped. It didn't have the perfect transfer that it was like, you know, obviously I'd put it in the exact right place. So the easy fix to this is just follow along the outside of that mask with like, give it like a, uh, like a quarter inch margin on either side of that line is where I'll actually make the cut. But uh, that's gonna make a nice patch. I'm looking forward to putting that on. Okay, if you've been following along with the channel for more than five minutes, you've seen me do this a half dozen times at this point. We're doing the cut and butt method of welding this into place. You were basically are, are making a 45 degree angle cut into the metal with this panel patch or spot welded or tack welded into place just to hold it steady. 
and then we make our 45 degree cut with a disc, cutoff disc, and we push the metal in. The existing underlying metal gets pushed out of the way, the new metal gets pushed into place, and then we make sure that the edges are completely flush as they are, and then we tack weld up. We continue this process all the way around until essentially the original metal comes out in one piece and we've already welded in a complete new patch panel. Yep, brand new metal. Okay, well you saw the before and here's the after. Got a little bit of welding to do here. I'm gonna do another day. I uh, cut way too deep and wide of a hole there, but that's easily patched. And I've got other, you know, metal from over there to use to do the patch job if I even needed to. And here's the part that everybody loves. Hopefully this will come off in one piece. Let's see. Shall return. Would you have a look at that? Now, compare this Roddy McRodderson over here. Just nasty. Not worth saving even a little bit to the beautiful solid metal. Thank goodness that parts cab has come in handy so many times. My gosh. Welcome back to the shop. Let's get right into it. All right, here we are back at the back here. You recall from yesterday, I had a little bit of an issue here. I tried to cut at a 45 degree angle and the blade just wobbled out and just cut a ton of material. So here's the solution. This is left over from the original cab. This section here didn't have any kind of pitting on it. So I'm able to recycle it and actually came from right about there on the cab. So it should be pretty accurate as far as the bend being flat and in the right place. I've scribed a little line. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, there's the line you can see I scribed. I'm going to cut that edge, weld that in, and then I'm going to do the cut and butt method on this side of this new patch panel and see if that will work. Stick around. This turned out pretty nice. Again, using that repair, uh, the piece of the original uh, cab, just to bridge that gap. The, the angles are all the same. The bevels all hit in the same spots, and it's pretty straight. Anyway, here's what's going on on the inside right now gotten all these uh, panels painted up in preparation for some more tack welding. I kind of just want to get all this tacked into place and then I'm just going to go crazy doing like the, all the tacks like, you know, maybe this afternoon. Anyway, I had to remove this rib section, this stiffening rib um, to get some work done earlier on in this project. I've painted the inside of this in a farm uh, and implement paint black. I'm going to go ahead and tack up along these edges here on both sides and then I'm going to go ahead and fit this section is bottom section that will surround the rear window. Fortunately, I didn't throw away my broken rear window that has taken a significant amount of damage, but in order to actually properly and effectively fit this thing up, I'm really needing this. So I'm relying heavily on this to get the proper fit up, excuse me, for this bottom piece here. So, well, boys and girls, this is what progress looks like. Got this bottom section is getting tacked in as we speak. Got nice, good, uh, Nice, good flush surfaces on both sides, which I'm really happy with. Uh, I've got a little bit of a gap here that I'm going to have to address. I'm probably going to have to make just a little sliver. I'll probably just wind up tacking on a larger piece, uh, just get it tacked in across there and just do another cut and butt across the bottom instead of trying to piece in like a you know exact fit right there. That doesn't make any sense. But I should be able to get good tacks all the way across to about there. And then on the inside, you can see the, uh, I think I showed you this already, but got this little sill right here which is where the bottom of the rear window sits and then it kind of gets hooked in on the sides on both spots and then attached over top of that is like um a section of trim that goes all the way around and that just holds it all together but this is coming along really really well all right i wound up doing just what i was saying instead of trying to piece in an exact fit for that little tiny sliver that i was dealing with there just take a giant chunk and i'm going to take my cutoff wheel and just zip right along that edge Cut out, cut off what I don't need, and then I'll tack that in, and it'll be perfect. Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to be here all day. Lot of tack welds to get this thing put back together. Um, you know, doing sheet metal work is pretty uh, mentally stimulating when you're actually planning everything out, figuring out how you're going to do something, and kind of how you're going to get the angle right, trimming, getting everything just right. But this, this is straight grunt work, and um, it's. It's grueling. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep at it and maybe in an hour I'll be done, we'll see. 
Okay, these uh, welds are good enough for now. I need a break. Um, so here's what we're gonna do next. There is a band of rot um, on both sides, right about here, where this area had some um, some like fabric or like natural material behind it to act as a sound deadening. That obviously got wet at one point and just rotted out from contact. It was much worse on the other side. Let me show you. You can see there's a ton of rot through that band. So what have I done here? I'm gonna remove both sides of this. This exposes the bottom, uh, this flange of the uh, the flange of the floor pan, and I'm going to replace that metal with new metal. And this uh, remaining metal will help it maintain its shape. I'm just going to lay a piece over that, tack it in like I do, and continue the cut and butt as we go. Now, if you do watch the Fitzy's Fabrication uh, series, he always says, you know, you shouldn't really cut panels out. It's not a good idea to replace full panels. The issue is here, I wouldn't be able to drop out anything that got, um, like the original rusty metal here. It would have nowhere to go because it's got this floor pan section behind it. Also, if there's any question in your mind as to whether or not this is a good idea, another ticking time bomb of rust and rot. Um, and also, I'm not going all the way to the bottom edge because I can see all that. This is like, this is on the outside of the truck and this is all gonna get uh, rust encapsulated just like everything else. So there shouldn't be any issue of that going forward. I'm gonna get in here with my needle scaler, clean all this up after I cut the other side. Okay, I cut out a patch. I just laid it on top. If I was doing this farmer style, uh, the job would already be done, but it's not. Um, I've actually painted the inside of this panel with weld through primer, you can see there. And then um, the inside is all been, the, 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 in, the outside surface of the floor pan that's hidden behind this has all been rust encapsulated. So now I'm gonna start doing my cut and bolt. All right, one cab corner down. This one went in real easy and now I've got a patch panel set up, ready to go. I'm gonna have to paint, I'm gonna prime the back of this. I've taken some time, there are a bunch of pinholes in here and I welded those up because this is 14 gauge steel. It can take a significant amount of welding. I used a uh, rust, can, rust reformer product on this, uh, on this outside part of the floor pan. And uh, next up, once I get this thing primed up, I'm do the same deals over there and keep on moving. Well, well, well. Just in time for quitting time. Wrapped up on both of my cab corners. And this thing is getting more and more solid by the hour. Um, tomorrow, I'll be back in the shop. I have probably a full day of tack welding. Well, not a full day. I'm gonna spend a few hours tomorrow finishing up these tack welds, which is just brutally not fun, but it needs to be done. Um, the next things on the agenda, we're gonna start tackling, I'm gonna start needing to tackle this section in here. As you can see, it is in really bad shape. This entire section here is a U-shaped channel. It starts here, comes across, and it's got a um, this little like locking tab mechanism. It indexes the door right in the right spot. Both sides of these are, um, well, they need to be replaced, more or less. There's, gonna, there's some salvageable components to them, but overall, uh, they look like they need to go, especially this one. Got a ton of pinhole rusts rotting through there. The outer edge of the roof line where it, where it comes in to meet here, as you can see, is just toast. So that's going to be replaced. Um, but this is going to be a big job. I've been kind of putting this off because I'm sort of dreading it for whatever reason because it, it, it does so greatly impact fitment of the doors. Um, but this area on same deal on this side, gosh, just, this is just all through here. It's just completely rotten. It's got to get replaced. Cause if I don't replace it, I'm going to paint over this. And then in three or four years, maybe in 10 years, it's just going to all rot through. It's going to be gone. So it's going to ruin my paint job and then I'm going to be pissed off and I'll be older. So I'll be much more grumpy in general. So let's just replace it now while I'm young and healthy and you know, there it is. So anyway, if you enjoyed that, follow along on Instagram at Parts and Restoration and check out my extensive video collection here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.